OK, so we're going to continue. Last time, we covered the topic of absolute luminosity. And we saw the mass luminosity relation and the Stefan Boltzmann law. Now we talk about apparent luminosity. Apparent luminosity is a measure of how bright a star appears to us. So the difference is this one is how bright it is. It actually is. Apparent luminosity is how bright it appears to us. So a star can be very, very bright, but if it's very far away from us, millions of light years, it's not going to appear very bright. Okay. So the equation is apparent luminosity is equal to uh, or proportional to uh, the actual luminosity, which is this guy, divided by the distance of the star from us squared, distance squared. And um, you might say, why is this distance squared? And uh, this picture shows you why. This equation is not only true for stars. It could be true for any light bulb, OK? If a light bulb is emitting a certain amount of energy, see here it says electromagnetic flux is energy divided by area, E divided by area. What's the area of a sphere? 4 pi times the distance from the light source squared. So the, that's the equation for the area of a sphere. So if the distance is one meter away, if you're one meter away from that light bulb, how much ele electromagnetic flux are you receiving? E divided by 4 pi 1 squared, E divided by 4 pi. If you are two meters away from that same light source, how much are you receiving? Okay. Then you're going to have E over 4 pi. 2 squared, e over 16 pi. So the flux decreases as distance increases because the energy remains the same, but the area of the sphere increases. Okay. So when you go to 3 meters away, the distance is uh, 3. So then you do four, uh, e over 3, 6 pi, you know, e over uh, 4 pi, 3 squared, e over 36 pi. What is most interesting to us is not necessarily this answer, but the relationship of this answer to this answer, and then the relationship of this answer to this answer. How much less is this than that? See, if this is e over 4 pi, and this one is e over 16 pi, this guy is 4 times less than that, right? This divided by 4 equals that. And then what is this one? e over 36 pi. This one is 9 times less than that. You see? Why? Because 3 squared is 9. e over 4 pi is the same as this answer, right? So this, this one is 9 times less than that. This one is 4 times less than that. Why did the 4 and 9 rule come? It came from this equation. You see the d squared? 1 over d squared. And that's where this comes from. OK? So the, essentially, the idea is if you go twice as far away from a light source, the light source will look one-fourth as bright. Three times as far away, one-ninth as bright, you see? If you take a star twice as far away from us, so imagine the Earth was at two AUs away instead of one AU away, right? Uh, if, if the Earth was two AUs away, how bright would the sun look as compared to how bright it looks now? it would look only one-fourth as bright, 25% as bright as it does now, you see. If the Earth was at 3 AUs away, right, how bright would the sun appear? One-ninth as bright. You see how, how quickly the brightness drops? So if you're at 2 AUs away, is it going to be cold? Oh, yeah, 2 AUs away. Oh, definitely it's going to be cold because the sun is going to look one-fourth as bright. That you're going to get one-fourth the amount of sunlight, one-fourth the amount of energy. The temperature of the planet drops rapidly as you go farther, you see. <coughs> so that's the kind of interesting thing. Let's see what this picture shows. This picture shows that you can apply this to even car uh, lights. You see, if a 
light from the car if the car is 30 meters away and then the car starts approaching you 20 meters away, the car starts approaching 10 meters away, how much brighter does the light appear here versus here versus here? Since this one is twice as far away from here, right? This one should appear four times brighter than that. Or you can say this one should appear one fourth as bright as this. Why? Twice as far away, two squared is four. So this appears one fourth as bright as this. How about this one as compared to this? One ninth as bright. You see? This one is one ninth as bright, or you can say this one is nine times brighter than that one. You see? So this, this equation is true for not just stars, for uh, any kind of light source. One, w another way we could use this equation is this. There's a couple of different ways we can uh, think about this equation and analyze this equation. Imagine I were to tell you we, one day we discover a star and uh, that star is <coughs> 100 times brighter than our sun. I'll make this like a story. So we discover this plan, uh, this star, which is 100 times brighter than our sun, and we find that it's a suitable star to live around. And then there comes a time one day when our sun is going to die, and that, is, that will happen. So we, we decide to drag the Earth, move it to that star, okay, so that the Earth goes around that other star. So we take this rocket, imagine, we take that planet, and we take it to that other star, and we're trying to decide where, how far away uh, the Earth needs to be from that star so that the temperature of the Earth will be similar to what the temperature here on this uh, solar system, okay? So my question to you is, how far away should we place the Earth around that other star so that the temperature will be similar to what it is here? How can we use this equation to answer that, you see? So if we take it around that other star, do we want the apparent luminosity of that other star to appear just as bright as the sun appears now? Yeah. You see, so we would like it, the apparent luminosity, to stay the same. So what I'm going to do is apparent luminosity, I'm going to put 1, meaning that's the same apparent luminosity as what we observe the sun now. And then over here, luminosity, I'm going to put 100, and then I'm going to put d squared. So now solve for d. What should d be so that uh, the temperatures there will be similar to Earth? Well, this is a pretty easy equation. You cross multiply. d squared equals 100. d equals square root of 100. d equals 10. 10 AUs. So if you discover a star 100 times brighter than the sun, drag it out. 10 AUs away from that star, and then have it go around that star, and then the temperatures will be similar, OK? 100 times brighter, you need to be 10 AUs away. How about if the star was 10 times brighter than the sun? Now you can start getting the idea and, and uh, answer any question like that. So then you would just say, put here 10. d squared is 10, d equals square root of 10. It's not a perfect square rootable number, but you get something like 3 point something, right? 3 point something, something, something AU. See that? So if a star was 10 times brighter, you need to be about 3 AUs away from that star so that the apparent luminosity of that star is exactly the same as the apparent luminosity of our own star. You can see? So this equation is pretty useful in that sense. In the next page, there will be a different kind of question we can ask on the next slide. So this is a different way we can use this equation. So let's say I ask you this question.
A star A has an absolute luminosity of 300. So imagine this is the Earth, and then there's a star, and we're calling it here star A, and it is uh, 300 light, it is uh, 40 light years away from us, 40 light years away, you see? So a star A has an absolute luminosity of 300, and it's 40 light years away from you. Another star has an absolute luminosity of 5,000, so it's much brighter than this star, but it happens to be farther away from you, 200 light years, okay? So this one is 300 times as bright as the sun, and then there's another star that happens to be farther away and uh, 5,000 times as bright as the sun, but it's 200 light years away. When you go out at night and try to observe both stars, which one will appear brighter? Okay? It's kind of hard to tell at first. I specifically made the problem so you are forced to use the equation. Okay? You can't just guess the answer. If I had asked it this way, could you have guessed the answer? Let's say this one was 5,000 times as bright, and this one was 300 times as bright. 5,000 times as bright as the sun, 40 light years away. 300 times as bright as the sun, 200 light years away. Which one looks brighter? Yeah. If I ask that to you on the test, don't use the equation. It's obvious. Okay, it's not that the equation will give you the wrong answer, it's just that it's gonna give you the answer you already know, okay? You don't need to use it. So of course this appears brighter, much b b brighter star closer to you. But if I ask it to you the other way, mm, this one's quite hard to guess. You see, this is brighter, but farther, dimmer, but closer. Okay, you're forced to use the equation. Which one would appear brighter, you see? So how do we do it? We calculate the apparent luminosity of star A and we get a certain decimal number. So we take the uh, 300, divide it by its distance from us and you gotta square the distance, okay? 40 squared. 40 squared is 1600. I told you earlier this lecture has more math so you're constantly using the calculator. So you're doing 300 over 1600. You take the ratio, you get a, some decimal number, 0.1875, that's the apparent luminosity. Apparent luminosity of star B, 5,000 over 200 squared. So 200 squared is the distance, so you're gonna square that 40,000. Then you divide this by this, 0.125. Then the two decimals you get, you compare them to each other. Whichever decimal is bigger, that star will appear brighter. That's pretty much the gist of it. So since this decimal is bigger than this decimal, that star will appear brighter to you uh, when you go out at night, okay? So there's several ways that you can see that this equation is useful. You can ask, ask questions from different points of view, okay? Uh, 